Okay, some thoughts I have on the Jessica Herringa investigation. And the reason why I would even be looking into the Jessica Herringa investigation, not that it's not interesting and not that it wouldn't draw my attention and make me curious about looking into it, but formally, most of my attention when it come to when it came to uh, researching criminal cases or conspiracy theories is more like you know the Son of Sam murders, where Son of Sam confessed he participated in some of the murders, but he was involved in a cult. Now that's become mainstream knowledge. Everybody knows. The Son of Sam murders were, just, were not just done by David Berkowitz. That's the type of research I'm into, like the Jonestown stuff or the Zebra murders or the Manson murders, just out of curiosity of the conspiracy world. But with Jessica Herringa, which is Jessica Herringa's case is not uncommon. People go missing all the time. But the thing that made me so curious about the Jessica Herringa case is it happened in an area I'm very familiar with, the ExxonMobil gas station. In Norton Shores, and I remember I was watching Jeffrey Willis speak about the case, and he said how one of the jurors was on Facebook communicating with somebody, and as soon as he said that, that made me think of um, contract stalking, and I was seeing a woman dating her in person, like she was picking me up every day, and she was being involved with this contract stalking stuff, and she would communicate to the people that were using her through Facebook, and she explained a little bit to me how it worked and 1-800 numbers, all different sorts of stuff. And so, that made, when I heard Jeffrey Willis speak about that, I looked into his case and I found out, like in April of 2016, they claimed that, you know, allegedly he tried to kidnap some girl. He got arrested in May of 2016. Then after his arrest, he was charged with a Rebecca Bledge case. Then in September of 2016, he was charged with the Jessica Herringa case. And... One of the first things I thought about the Jessica Herring case is there's been some skept some skeptical individuals saying, well, maybe Jeffrey Willis didn't do it. And, you know, I don't have anything against that ankle. Maybe he was framed. Who knows? But Jeffrey Willis or somebody planted evidence on him. You know, who knows? Like, if he, being framed doesn't mean too much. How is he framed? Did somebody plant evidence on him or, you know, what happened? But what if Jessica Herring uh, was never even kidnapped? When if she willingly went with somebody from the Exxon gas station, okay? And then wherever she went, something else happened. You know, that's one of the things I've thought about with the Herringa case. When if she really wasn't kidnapped? What, like, are we really sure she was at work that day? What evidence is that she was really at work that day? And how do we know she didn't leave willingly? Maybe she met some guy online you know, and he promised her some money or something. Uh, the angle of drugs being sold at the Exxon gas station is very serious to me because the Drug Enforcement Agency never investigated the secret phone connection and all that stuff. There's a lot of questionable activity that comes to the Herringa case. <clears throat> but, you know, I've seen a lot of strange stuff in the Muskegon area, and I definitely know there's something more to the Herringa case. But that's one angle I would look at. Was she actually kidnapped from the Exxon Mobil gas station? Is it possible somebody gave her a ride and don't, don't even know they gave Jessica a ride? You know, could she still be around? That's that's an interesting question, you know? Uh, that's a good question. 